Hello, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ryobi P460 rotary tool, so let's get started. Okay, starting off with the rear of the tool, we have the 18-volt battery slot. Now, the slot will accept any of Ryobi's 18-volt batteries, and it does a fairly good job. I will say that the battery doesn't fit in there quite as securely as I personally would have liked. There's quite a bit of play and just overall looseness from this particular slot. And while I don't think the battery's going to accidentally fall out or anything like that, I would have preferred to see a little bit better, I don't know, fit when it comes to the battery and the slot. So overall, Ryobi typically does a pretty good job with their battery slots, but this one I think they might have been asleep at the drawing board. So just keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to the accessory storage. Now the accessory storage is a really nice and convenient feature of this tool, and it comes in handy for when you're moving around at a work site or just at the workshop at home. So overall, I really do like the accessory storage on this particular tool. There's 23 individual slots, which will accept pretty much all the standard rotary tool accessories that you'll find on the market. And then there's the additional spot in the top right corner for the accessory wrench. So overall, it does a good job of carrying around all the accessories you might need a, a, on a particular given job. Now the holes are basically just a hole through a piece of rubber that has been affixed to the top of the tool, and it actually works very well. And I don't think you're going to have any issues with the accessories falling out because they're held in place firmly and even if you flip the tool upside down they're still going to stay in place. So overall I would definitely consider the accessory storage on this to be a big pro in my opinion. Okay, moving on to the on-off switch. The on-off switch is located on the right side of the tool, and to turn on the tool, you simply push the switch to the left. To turn off the tool, you simply push the switch to the right again, and that will turn off the tool. Overall, the switch has plenty of resistance to keep it from being accidentally turned on or off, but there's still not so much resistance that it's a pain to turn on and off. So overall, it gets a pass just for the ease of operation of the switch. Now, when you turn off the tool, the hit, rotating head stops instantly, so that's also a very nice feature of this particular tool. And right next to the on and off switch, we have the variable speed dial, which is a little bit misleading in how it's marketed, but I'll let you watch the video so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is basically the fact that this is a stair-step speed control rather than a hill style speed control, meaning that you don't really have multiple or tons of variable speeds in between the top and high, you only have six. And from the marketing material from this slide right here, you can see why this is a little bit irritating to me. Now on the slide, it lists the number of speeds on the less expensive model as five. I like that. That means they're being honest about how many speeds it has and what you can expect that it can do. That's good. But on this particular model, all they say under the number of speeds is variable. Now why would they say variable instead of six? Well, maybe it's because they're hoping that you're going to buy this and be perfectly happy or not notice the fact that it only has six different speeds. Only one more speed than what the less expensive model has. Now, normally this wouldn't be that big of a deal if they had been truthful about it, but the fact that they decided to go with variable means that you're probably going to be expecting, since it has a control dial, somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 different speeds rather than the six. And this is just a disappointment considering that people who are working on small and delicate pieces of who knows what usually like having lots of different options for when they're cutting, grinding, or polishing. And the fact that this only has six different speeds, but they make it sound like it has a variable speed or many more speeds than that is just a, well, it's a scummy marketing tactic and I really don't appreciate it when companies do this and Ryobi, you don't get a pass simply because I like the majority of your tools. So quite frankly, this is a disappointment and I really hope they refrain from this sort of marketing in the future. Okay, moving on to the motor outlet port, aka what the manual calls a threaded outlet. Overall, it's a fairly simple design for attaching the flexible shaft to the tool itself, and it seems to work fairly well. The, the shaft connects securely, and I haven't had any issues with the shaft becoming loose or anything, so I think it's a good design. I will say that it appears to be a proprietary design that only Ryobi offers any sort of parts or pieces for, and at the moment, it's a little bit hard to track down a replacement shaft in case something happens to your existing shaft. So, quite frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed it's proprietary but it does its job and it seems to do just fine. 
I know some people were hoping that the Dremel flexible shaft would be compatible with this particular tool, but from what I've read in forms and other reviews, it isn't. So that's also a disappointment. But the outlet port seems to be a fairly good design, so I'm happy with it. Okay, let's move on to the flexible shaft. Now the flexible shaft is about three feet in length and it feels like it's made out of a high quality material. I don't know what the internals exactly look like, but the externals look like a, well, it looks like sort of a hard rubber, well, not a hard rubber, but a flexible rubber cord that has springs at either end that protect the ports and the pin inlet, and it seems to do its job just fine. I haven't had any issues with it, and it seems to be fairly flexible, even when the tool is operating at maximum power. So I think it gets a pass in this regard. So I'm perfectly happy with just how well the flexible shaft works. I don't really have any complaints. So moving on. Okay, moving on to the rotary pin itself. Now the rotary pin itself is fairly small and compact and it will do a good job of getting into tight spaces that you won't be able to get a full size Dremel into. So I'm pretty happy with it in that regard. Now the rubberized texture that's on the rotary pin is fairly decent and I haven't had any issues with my fingers slipping off accidentally or becoming dislodged due to sweaty conditions. So overall the rubberized texture is also good. Now one area that I would change would probably be the spindle lock. The spindle lock is, well it, the, it's decent and it does its job. It's just a little bit on the small side and I personally would have preferred a little bit bigger or just a little bit easier way of well pushing the little lever forward but it's not horrible and it still does its job so I'm happy with it now the collet or the chuck or whatever you want to call it the thing that holds the tool or accessories in place on the front of the pin well it does its job but it's also on the small side and you're probably going to have to use the wrench a good chunk of the time when you're changing out the accessories but overall it does its job and i haven't had any accessories come loose or fall out so i think it gets a pass too i just would have preferred it to be bigger as well so overall the pin does its job and it does its job just fine there's just a few minor things that i would change so at the end of the day it gets a pass Okay, moving to the underneath side of the tool, we have the four rubberized feet that will help keep the tool in place. Obviously, if you yank too hard on that flexible sha shaft, they're going to move, but they still do a fairly good job of keeping the tool in place if you're not yanking too hard on that flexible shaft. So quite frankly, they do their job just fine and I don't see any issues with them. So moving on. And last but not least, we have the wall mount. Now the wall mount, they can it has three different positions that you can mount it in and overall I'm fairly happy with just the overall design. It also has the correct measurement distances hard molded into the bottom of the plastic and quite frankly that's super useful and something I'd like to see on other tools that are mountable. So overall the mounting system gets a, pl a plus in my opinion. Okay let's talk about what kind of jobs this rotary tool can handle and what kind of jobs it can't handle. This rotary tool does a good job with jobs that require high RPMs, things like polishing, engraving, cleaning, or drilling into light materials, or even using the cutoff disc for cutting through metal. Those sort of jobs this rotary tool will do a good job at. Now the areas where this rotary tool is not going to shine or even do a good job at would probably be anything that requires lots of torque. Things like drilling into wood or cutting wood using a miniature saw blade it just is not going to have a very good performance or it's just not going to be able to do period. So quite frankly, if you're going to be working with wood a lot, I probably would get a dedicated hand Dremel that doesn't have a flexible shaft and that's just a route you'll probably have to go. The flexible shaft really limits on how much torque you actually have and it just is not going to be a pleasurable experience for when you're working with any sort of wood material or harder material that you're trying to drill through. So that's just something to be aware of. So moving on. Now tool only with all of its accessories as well as a the flexible shaft attached. It weighs 1,365 grams or a little over three pounds. And with a four amp hour battery, it weighs 2,085 grams, a little over four and a half pounds. So it's definitely in the heavyweight class. Okay, let's move on to the pros and cons. 18 volts. 18 volts is definitely a pro in my opinion, simply because you can use power tool batteries in this tool, as well as just being able to use it in remote locations since it's battery operated. So a pro in my opinion. Onboard storage. Overall, the onboard storage for the accessories is a super nice and convenient feature. They're, it's well designed and the accessories don't fall out. And so overall, I would definitely consider this to be a pro. Large switches. Overall, the switches for the on and off and the variable speed are large enough that you can easily control them if you're wearing gloves or if you're barehanded. And overall, I would definitely consider that to be a pro. 
long shaft. At three feet long, the flexible shaft is fairly long and it definitely helps for when you need to get into those tight to reach pl places or if you just need a little bit more flexibility. So overall, I definitely consider this to be a pro. Wall mountable. Being able to mount this in three different positions on the wall is definitely a useful feature and one that will come in handy. So definitely a pro. And the first man would be the safety shutoff. Now, when I use this tool and I apply too much torque to the pin, the tool will turn off completely. And in order to turn it back on, you have to flip the switch in order for the power to resume. A lot of rotary tools, what will happen is the power level will go down. And if you back off then the power level will go back up to where it's supposed to be. But most of the time on this one, it turns the tool off completely. So like I said earlier, I'm not sure if it, I have a defective model or if that's the way they all are. I did some research and it seems like other people have the same issue. But at the same time, I, it seems like a lot of people don't have this issue. So like I said, I'm not 100% sure if this is a feature or if this is just the way mine is. But overall, it's an annoyance and I really would personally prefer it not to turn off the tool completely. So that's why it's on the meh list. And the next meh would be the vibration. There are a lot of vi vibrations that are coming off this rotary tool and that's just sort of the nature of rotary tools. There really isn't much you can actually do to fix this simply because of the, how they're designed. And it's just something that you need to keep in mind. So if you are gonna be working on something delicate, make sure you're at the proper speeds before you start. And the first con would be that it's big. This is a very large tool and it definitely does not pack away easily. It takes up a lot of space and so if you're going on a trip and your space is limited, this is definitely not going to be your go-to tool for that trip, simply because of how large it is. And the next con would be that it's heavy. Overall, it weighs about three pounds without a battery and this is definitely on the heavy side when it comes to rotary tools. So it's just something else you have to keep in mind. And the next and probably biggest con, although it's not the last con, would be that it's expensive. Now, costing right at 79 US dollars, this is definitely on the high side considering what you're getting. And quite frankly, I really think there are better options out there available than this particular tool. But we can cover that later. But as it stands right now, $79 is definitely too expensive for this rotary tool. And the next con would be hard speeds. Like I said earlier, the speeds are not a gradual increase. They are hard stops and this is annoying, especially if you are trying to work on something and you require a speed in between the speeds that they provide. So overall, I'm not a fan of these hard speeds and I really wish that they had more of a variable speed rather than the hard stops. And the next con is that it's loud. It's definitely not going to win any awards for being quiet. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to be breaking some noise ordinances. So quite frankly, it's on the loud side and I really would have personally preferred some additional dampening to keep the noise level down. So that's just something else to be aware of. It's not that big of a con, but it still is a con. No AC option. Overall, I really would have preferred a way to power this with an AC cord or something. I know that you can do that with their soldering station, at least their more expensive soldering station, and it really would have been a nice feature to add to this, but they didn't, and so you're going to be stuck with only using batteries, and this can be a little bit of a disappointment, especially if you're, well, out of batteries. So this is a con in my opinion. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this rotary tool. Now overall, this rotary tool does its job, but it doesn't do its job all that great, to be honest. And quite frankly, for the price that they're asking for it, I really think you're better off getting a battery-powered inverter, aka the Ryobi RYI 150BG, their 18-volt battery inverter, and then just using a cheap Dremel or cheap Win, and I think that's going to give you a much better or much more satisfying result than what this particular rotary tool is capable of. I just think it's too big, it's too bulky, it's too loud, there's not enough torque, there's just too many downsides for it to be easily recommended. I personally use the Ryobi inverter and a Dremel, and I think that approach is great. It gives you way more options for when you're not using the rotary tool. Like if you're not using the rotary tool, you can power a work light or charge your laptop via the AC port on the inverter. And if you are using the rotary tool, then you can use a USB light or charge your phone. There really is way more options if you end up purchasing the inverter and a wind tool. Although it is a little bit more expensive, costing around $90 plus tax to get the inverter and a wind rotary tool versus the Ryobi rotary tool, which will cost you about $80. So overall, if I had to pick between those two different options, I would go with the inverter every single time. You're going to have more torque, it's going to be more versatile, and it just is the better option. So at the end of the day, would I recommend the P? 
four, six, zero, not really, not unless you're absolutely sure it's going to fill whatever need you have. And then I would definitely use it extensively before the return period is up, simply to make sure it's what you need and it can handle what you want it to do. But for me personally, I would rather go with the inverter and the cheap wind rotary tool, because quite frankly, that is going to give you more options and it's probably going to be better in the long run. Oh, and Ryobi did announce two additional rotary tools, but they're definitely going to be a little bit more on the pricey side. One of them will be retailing at $150, and that's going to be in the HP series, but it will feature a brushless motor, and overall looks like it's going to be a more serious rotary tool, so it'll be interesting to see how well that one performs. And then they also announced a, well, it looks very similar to the current model, and it's going to be priced at around $100, and it seems to fix some of my gripes, at least reading through what the information on it says, but then again, $100, I'm not sure if I would actually be willing to pay that for this sort of a tool. But it should be interesting to see how well it does as well. I am a little bit disappointed to see that the prices seem to be going up on a lot of Ryobi's tools, especially models that have been around a long time. So I guess that's just the nature of inflation, but it's still a disappointment. And I think that's it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. God bless.